doing good. How are you doing? Yeah, really good. Thanks. I just watched the movie actually with my dog, who's here there. But she, um, she, I, she fell asleep. I didn't. So that's the that's the important part. <clears throat> um, I really enjoyed it. I thought your performance was just brilliant. It's just so unhinged. I just keep looking over my shoulder in case you're standing behind me. But um, I just want to begin by asking how it was to to play a character like that I mean you know then you get these kind of class um uh, characters who can be uh, quite hard to sort of understand I suppose uh, when you, but, and this is one of those characters did you understand her did you feel like when you were playing her that at the very least you had to find the way to understand who she is or is that disconnect and not knowing actually an okay thing uh no for me I always need to know I don't need to know what the actual writer thought but like as an actor I need to know um but I definitely based all of my assumptions on history and psychology on, on the script. I feel like there's a lot, there's a lot of really juicy dialogue that let me into um, sort of let me craft her backstory. And as I was creating the character, I kind of, I started with reading interviews of, of psychopaths, especially trying to find psychopaths who were willing to be interviewed, who lead totally normal lives. Cause I feel like Rebecca has not been on the run for very long. She's not a very skilled liar. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I feel like I, I really, I had a good handle of her psychology <laughs> I mean, to the point yeah. that I could like shoot from the hip from it at a certain point. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, you know, there are sort of, there are sort of dark elements obviously to her demeanor, but just as, as, an, as an actor, it must be fun to play a character that just lets you just lose yourself like that in a role. Yeah. Yeah. Um, lose yourself. And then I did, like, I used myself. I was like, I was like, what are the things that I do that are a little like socially hokey that people go like, Huh, that's not <laughs> I'm like I was like we're gonna get finger finger guns in there like finger guns have got to be prominent <laughs> um no it was really it was really fun it was really fun to also be able to play with the comedy of this character and like pressing those limits like at which point in social awkwardness and pleasantry I was really trying to stay at like the uncanny valley of human behavior throughout the whole thing until it, it really until she's really just in adrenaline mode and having fun killing <laughs> You mentioned obviously kind of like being able to kind of exercise some of those own things we all have within us that so society says we're not allowed to do. So was it quite cathartic playing a character that let you kind of release all of those things and have no inhibitions? Because we are, we're all a little bit crazy, I think. And we all kind of, but we all suppress it because we, we have to. So it must be quite fun just to, to not have to worry about that. Yeah, it was really fun. Um, just also like, yeah, like, um, not worrying about making people feel a little uncomfortable and not worrying about it being a little bit too exuberant, exuberant. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was a really fun and freeing character to play. It was really fun. You obviously, um, have like a history, uh, doing Disney channel work and that requires quite overstated theatrical kind of performances. Did you find that yourself going back to kind of old techniques and skills you picked up from those years to help when you were sort of crafting this character? Yeah, I'll mention two things about that. The first thing is that the reason Brandon Christensen trusted me to do this performance was because I've done Disney press. <laughs> and like, if you can do Disney press, like telling <laughs> Like that's a specific kind of false social performance that I think was really applicable. Um, but also the character that I played for Disney was really similar in that it was just psychologically so different from me um, because I, I don't personally, I, I have the social awkwardness, but I don't personally relate to the not understanding people's expectations and not understanding people's feelings. Um, uh, that was a little, uh, so that was like, it was really like just a completely different psychology to fade into. And the character that I played for Disney isn't an actress from a 1960s movie. She's the character played by the actress. Mm. So she's like got all these things that she does, like hand on the hip, like kind of booty booch, like all those things that she does, not because of societal expectation, not because of look lookism, not because of sexism, but because it's what she fucking does in the movie. That's just what she does. <laughs> so it was um I felt like those characters are the most similar characters I've ever really played that are like they're it's, it's funny to compare a murdering psychopath to a dancing 1960s Disney beach girl but <laughs> in terms of the acting it was pretty similar <laughs> I actually find in some ways it can be easier playing characters that are quite far removed from yourself because they require more acting, I suppose, which, may, which get, makes it more of a, which relies more than on your skill in, in, rather than having to find more, I don't know, inner truth, if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, I also feel like it's less 
psychologically affecting to take home. Like if it, my character is completely separate from me, first of all, you get to f- escape yourself if you're having a stressful day, but also if the psychology is different than yours, you don't accidentally take as much of it home. <laughs> Yeah, I guess good acting, I always think, means losing your self-awareness, which is in some ways quite an interesting thing because it's a conflict with the fact that you're always being filmed. And when we're being filmed, we're very self-aware. But I think being a good actor means you have to forget there's a camera. You have to forget there's an eventual audience that are going to be watching it. With a role like this, is that especially important? Because she kind of is so wild to some degree, do you really just have to completely forget about everything and anything um, in your sort of in your in your parameter, I suppose? Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely, I think there are moments in this movie where I was like, I should have thought about the audience instead of just my character's thoughts a little more. Like there's at one point where I'm just, I'm, I'm through the window, um, of the door and like, I'm just, I'm doing so much nothing with my face that I kind of have an English accent. <laughs> Cause like, I'm just using the laziest part of my tongue. I'm just using the front of my mouth to speak. And I was like, I was like, I should have been a little bit more self-conscious and when making decisions as an actor, instead of just like full on creativity mode, I was like, I was like, I should have judged that performance a little bit. <laughs> but, um, no, I, um, yeah. Uh, especially a character like this. I really just, I just sort of went into it. It's really weird on camera acting is like the, action of completely forgetting your own thoughts to the point that you stimulate your amygdala but then you also have to have your prefrontal cortex active enough to hit your mark (laughs) um so it's 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 a it's a weird gig in that you have to be completely unaware that you're making a movie but also hit your mark it's just and um you have to be in your left brain to do that yeah you'll simultaneously have to always remember exactly what you've got to do while being someone else that has no idea they're supposed to do it (laughs) completely forgotten it yeah and for me how I do that is I plan the thoughts out Mm. for my character like if I'm like if this makes me think this then my reaction will be this and if that's what I've rehearsed then um I'll do the script right and also be not conscious So obviously, I mean, this character is a kind of classic sort of psychopathic character, but there's this added element of uh, having a platform to showcase it on. So you've always had these kind of unhinged characters on screen, but with the rise of like social media, that can now be shared and amplified, let's say, which means that characters who are already slightly unhinged can over kind of um, uh, exaggerate their own personality because they've got a camera in their face. Is that quite an interesting thing to play around with in this? Yeah, and it was it was fun to play with this movie is obviously asking the audience to wonder about like how far is too far and being false. Um, and like like I don't know who's the bigger psychopath, Rebecca or people on YouTube going like ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> like oh I'm okay. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, did you think that like, like you all right <laughs> yeah yeah that, that interview's going badly no. <laughs> um is um is social media do you think creating these personas or do you think the personas already exist they just now have a platform to share it if that makes sense yeah i think it's 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 that but it's also not seeing the other side like you're you're sort of performing into the void and i think that's what rebecca feels like like Rebecca looks at a face and is just like analytically guessing what the fuck does this person expect from me? Yeah. Like, and like, that's the lag and like the, the lag ends up being comedy for the, for the um, first part of the movie. But um, just like that, like, am I staying too long? Do I need to stay longer? What's the, like, what's the polite, socially normal amount of staying <laughs> that I need to be doing and I think there's like like how much do I need to shout into the void to get this attention back like you don't see like you're not having a conversation there's no tone and I I think you know there's it's it's intrinsically psychopathic to be doing that with the character you mentioned that she um you know she she'll there are certain things that she'll miss certain social cues she really care so much what people think which I think in some ways can be quite an admirable quality in people. Did that rub off on you at all? And just in general, just as an actress, does do you find characters can leave uh, marks on you as a person? Can you play someone for a few weeks? And if they have a trait you might admire, do you ever borrow it or take from it to for your for yourself as a person? Yeah, I don't mean to, but like I definitely my first show, it was it took me a really long time after like my first ABC family gig to stop going like, oh my God. <laughs> 
and it was written on like the writers always wrote it oh my god one word it's, mm-hmm. and like I was oh my godding um in my personal life <laughs> um but I think like I relate to Rebecca so much in, in that way like I usually do know what people are expecting and I definitely know like have my analytical and in, intuitive sense of what they're feeling um and then I just like I don't I I, I, don't know, I grew up in a weird community in Texas like it felt like telling me that I need to conform with people. It's like, that's obviously immoral. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to conform with those people. <laughs> like, um, so I think that, that was like a lot of how I related to Rebecca is just like, Rebecca doesn't care about how people feel about her behavior outside of needing to survive. Mm-hmm. And I think it's great. You, you mentioned obviously having to kind of lose that inhibition when playing characters like this, but I, I was, you know, the other actors, because obviously it's quite a small part of uh, cast, you, you've worked with them before, is that right? So that must make it easier when you're going on a set like this, when you worked with or you've, you've got a pre existing kind of relationships with the other people you're working with. Is that right? Did you, the other actors? I definitely have worked with people that the cast had worked with. And technically, I've been in a movie with Barbara, and technically, yeah. we've been on a Comic Con panel together. Right. And <laughs> I think we might have been introduced during that <laughs> experience. We're in the same photograph together. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't actually get to work with Barbara until this movie, but like Sarah Canning was on Vampire Diaries. And so we got to talk about all the people on that. And Osric was on Supernatural. And so we got to talk about that. And um, everyone was so amazingly welcoming to me and generous with me during scenes. And um, I really, it was, it was it, like one, one overly entitled or ungenerous person in a cast like that would really spoil the barrel. And we, I, I felt so lucky that just like such talented, but also very genuinely good and kind people. <laughs> and that's it. You mentioned a couple of the um, sort of TV shows and sort of series you've been on in the past. I always wonder when you've got these kind of, when you work on these kind of popular series, have such big cast, do people stay in touch and stuff? Do you get these kind of WhatsApp groups that sort of large, you get like supernatural WhatsApp groups and like these kind of things that, that survive the, the kind of like time? Because because for me, I, I watch these programs and I think, oh, they must all be like so close knit. But I guess in your profession, you do just move from one project to the other. So you have to learn to leave things as they are. But do you ever find some projects have, continuing kind of uh, relationships that come out of it yeah I definitely I have um some relationships with casts more than more than others um if there's a vampire diaries group jet I'm not on it (laughs) (laughs) I I, I would reckon that there probably isn't a net like a group jet that's everybody but um I think feel like the weird thing about joining these casts that have been so established is just the set environment is so already set up. And I, I say like, you can kind of tell everything about a cast um, just by showing up to set and how the set PA greets you. Like, cause sometimes you show up to set and like, it's like, hey, so this is a quiet zone, but we can, do you want anything from the truck? Like they can make yeah. a chai latte. Like, but like, I'm like, I'm like, okay, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a fun <laughs> Like sarcastic, supernatural showed up and they're just like hey you're uh that character right yeah the trailer's over there and it's like just pan to reveal like 45 trailers <laughs> i'm like this is going to be a really fun gig <laughs> <laughs> um talk about well, i was going to ask as well quickly because you mentioned barbara before what's it like work i mean you've been on a panel with her but work, actually working with her and having so, some of the sort of fun scenes you got to play out i mean she's such a kind of legend of the of the of the genre she sort of has excelled in over, over the last sort of however long but she's she's a wonderful actress what was it like collaborating with someone like her on this on this project beautiful just beautiful and wonderful we had her for like two days i think one shooting day was was our day with barbara um and she was just so down it was like cold on the mountain she was like yeah more dirt but more blood like <laughs> get more blood on me it was so fun to work with her she was so generous and wonderful um there was I mean there was like added pressure of like screaming in an icon's face Mm. during a pandemic I was like I've I've been safe but like this could be I could feel bad about this forever (laughs) um and then you know it was like it, it wasn't like normal times and we were up on a mountain so like I definitely invited Barbara over after that one day and we hung out in my hotel room with my dog and fiance but <laughs> um, it was it was a quick in and out for Barb yeah. so you had your you took your dog with you to to, to the shoot I like to yeah that's I like great to. yeah I, I drove from, I drove like across so, America <laughs> so that I could oh, have. that's great 
Yeah, I was going to say I went to a press junket like last week, and I was uh, someone, one of the actors, brought their dog, and their dog was just in the corner of the room. I was like, we should normalize bringing dogs to work. I think all the time. She got in a, a short that I did. It was like oh, a really great fit. Like she was just on set, and there was like, well, let's use her, and um, <laughs> and so she's like on like there's a goth girl reading at the party, and my dog's just like. <laughs> she's on my mdb she has an imdb picture. really oh wow natural uh, so my final question is just asking sort of, sort of the obvious question to end on but what, what, what have you got much coming up in the uh, next or in the future Are you working on anything at the moment um nothing at the moment um uh i'm like i'm actually i'm uh, attached as a director to something that's in early pre-production and so that's been really fun to, to collaborate on acting wise um you know I'm, I'm in north carolina i'm auditioning a bit mm. i'll probably try to be auditioning more <laughs> fervently soon <laughs> it's getting safer out there knock yeah. knock just about um so just to say finally you, you mentioned you might be you're sort of co-directing are you allowed you're able to talk about that project yet or is it very a bit too no. early it's not not talking point <laughs> okay yeah. well, well fingers crossed it will get to a stage where we can talk about it soon enough <laughs> anyway brilliant cool well thank you so much for your time today Grace. thank it's been you so much and i love your couch Thank you very much. We've got, I've got this in our, my wife got this in Albania. So really, yeah. Thank and the you. pillow with it is great. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. And then the dog. Now she's. Just, there we go. Brilliant. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much. Much thank you. Today. Cheers. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey.